Hello and welcome to my channel. I am sharing tips and advice and experience of my life here in Costa Rica. So I have been living here for a couple of years now and it has been quite a journey, a beautiful one overall, not without its challenges, of course. And I talk on my channel about the courage it takes to take the leap. Of course, it is worth it. If you are looking for a new experience in life, if you feel that you are not fulfilled or that, that where you're living is not offering you what you're looking for, then Costa Rica could be a beautiful option for you. And I just want to quickly mention that I'm offering one-on-one -on -one private consultations for anybody who would like some advice and support in their potential relocation to Costa Rica. The link is down below in the description box. So in this video, I'm talking quickly about the pros and cons, the ones that seem the most obvious to me about living here in Costa Rica. Of course, this is personal. Bugs, for example, are not an issue for me, so I'm not putting this on my list. For some people, it might be a huge con. I'm lucky that I haven't really faced uh, scorpions or snakes or things that might make life here challenging for some people. Of course, it's not something that I'm afraid of, so it doesn't really show up too much in my life. Um, so the pros and cons are more things that I've experienced personally and that just seem to be general challenges or uh, beautiful things for most people. All right, so I think that the number one thing that attracts people to this country is the abundance. And when I talk about abundance, I'm talking about the fruits, the vegetables, and the greenery, the flowers, everything that is around you. I mean, in Costa Rica, you can find really amazingly delicious tropical fruits, uh, fruits that you don't find easily. My favorite fruit being soursop, also called guanabana here. For example, this is not a fruit that you can find in the US or Canada. It has amazing health benefits. It's anti-cancer. Uh, it's great for digestion and it's just delicious. So this is an example of the abundance that you can find. It is quite easy where I'm living in the southern zone to find really fresh fruits and vegetables. Right now it is a lychee season, so you can find amazing lychees for a really affordable price on the side of the road wherever you go. So yeah, and the flowers here are beautiful if you are into nature. There are mountains everywhere, there are rivers, there's waterfalls, there's beaches. It's really great for everybody who is a nature lover. You will be served absolutely. A con that comes along with the abundance is the fact that we are living in a tropical climate. This means a lot of humidity, a lot, like 100% humidity, and rain. So the rainy season runs from May till the end of November, just about. Uh, you can have a little bit of rain in the dry season, but for the most part, it is sunny and beautiful, which is why most people travel to Costa Rica during December to uh, April. And the rainy season is very rainy. Now, depending on where you live, it can be rainier than in other areas. I'm lucky to live in an area that's just not that rainy, so it makes it easier. Of course, it's gray. I woke up this morning, I didn't really see any sun, it's been gray all day. And that's just part of it. Of course, it makes going to the beach easier because you're not burning. You can go pretty much at any time. I actually like the rainy season personally. It's quiet. It's kind of like the winter in Canada where it's more time for cocooning and just slowing down. It's a, it's a very quiet time. What the impact of the rain and the humidity brings is a lot of mold. Mold is personally my biggest struggle in Costa Rica. Almost every home in Costa Rica has mold. And of course, some of us are more sensitive to it than others. I am quite sensitive. And so I'm always trying to make sure that I'm not breathing it in, that, I'm ha that I have proper airflow in um, my living spaces, that my clothes are not getting moldy because that can be a thing which I've experienced and a lot of people have experienced. It is a challenge. It is probably my number one con, the mold that comes because of the rain. So rain is not so much a con for me, but the mold is, they come together. But what comes from this rainy season is energetically Costa Rica is just pure. It is a place of serenity and beauty. The idea of Pura Vida, which is very key to the locals life, which means pure life is ingrained in the spirits of the people in the land. This is why the rivers are so pure, the waters that flow are pristine, 
and energetically it just feels light. A lot of the people who spend a lot of time here and then go back home to the US, Canada or Europe struggle with the energetic density that they experience when they go back and they quickly want to come back to Costa Rica where life is just lighter and easier. So if you're looking to escape the dense chaotic energy that your country might hold coming here can offer you a lot more serenity in my experience especially if you're not living in a city of course the more you're in nature the more you experience serenity but a con that people struggle with is the heat of course the rainy season is not so bad and of course it depends on where you live because costa rica is microclimates everywhere and is also beaches and mountains everywhere. So if you're in the mountains, it's gonna be cooler. The closer you are to the ocean, the more you have to deal with the heat. So if you're somebody that struggles with the heat, then consider going more in the mountains. The good news is, is that you do not have to go far from the beach to already gain cooler weather. You can drive 20 minutes up in the mountains from the beach and already save a few degrees, which will make your experience here with the heat easier. A lot of people in my area choose to go and live in a place called Chiripo, which is the highest mountain in Costa Rica for the serenity, but also for the cooler air. So that's something to consider for some people. Moving on to the next pro is the community. And I'm talking especially the expat community where there are just such beautiful people in Costa Rica. You can make amazing connections, find really inspiring people, and there are always events going on, especially in the dry season, you will be served no matter what you are looking for in terms of gatherings and in terms of offerings, you will find somebody here that is doing it, especially in terms of like spiritual gatherings and offerings. So if you're into kirtans or you're into acro yoga or whatever it is, you can find your community here, people who are into that, and you can really make amazing connections. For me, this is probably my second favorite thing after the abundance in Costa Rica is just the quality of things that go on here. And one thing that is appreciated is a lot of the gatherings are really quite affordable um, compared to, for example, in Canada, a lot of the spiritual events tend to be more expensive, but in Costa Rica, people keep things quite affordable because the cost of living is high. I have a video on the cost of living that you can refer to if you want more information. However, I will quickly note that this is definitely a con um, although you can find housing that is more affordable than in the US or Canada, in general, especially when it comes to food, uh, everything that's imported, cars are really expensive, like 50% more expensive than they should be at a minimum, sometimes 100% more expensive than they should be. So if you're on a budget, it can be challenging to come to Costa Rica. Like you need to have a good amount of abundance to thrive here, and a lot of people, unfortunately, go back to their home country simply because they can't afford to live here. But if you can make it here, if you have ways to generate abundance, then coming here is an amazing place. The beach, the mountains, what I love is that you don't have to choose because of course the mountains are right behind the beach. So if you wanna live in the mountains and have a view and feel inspired by what you're looking at, then you can, you don't have to go far from the beach. You don't necessarily have to choose so much depending on where you're living. If you want to live a quiet life, if you want to live a life that's just more like countryside serene, you can. And if you want to live a life of more action where there's more beach and stuff, you can. And if you want to find an in-between, you also can, which is what I've done. I live somewhere that is about a 15 minute drive to the beach, about a 25 minute drive to a more central location, Vita. And um, I have the mountains, I have more fresh air, I have a beautiful creek with a waterfall like a hundred meters behind my house. I have it all. And it takes of course some searching to find something that's in between to know where's the right place for you in Costa Rica when you arrive. But if you persist and you know what you're looking for, you can find something great. On that note, I will mention my final con, which is cars. Now I highly recommend having a car in Costa Rica because although there is public transportation and it's very affordable, you better be patient because the bus might only come three times a day and not come on Sundays. Um, you can of course hitchhike and it is safe and easy in general to hitchhike and a lot of people do it. A lot of people manage to live here without a car. 
In my experience though, having a car just makes your life so much easier. It is a con because the cost of cars is really high. Expect to pay at a minimum $5,000 for a low grade car. Uh, you know, you want something half decent, you want, want to pay something more like $8,000, even more. Uh, that's the cost of my car and it's a 1991, okay, just saying. Um, I mentioned again in my cost of living video about my car and I plan on doing a future video about cars. So you can subscribe to the channel if you like the information I'm giving. And also don't forget to like the video down below if you like the information that I'm giving you. Um, cars, unfortunately, break down a lot. The roads are bad. The mechanics don't have formal training. So finding a good mechanic can be really challenging. And so you can keep going to the mechanic, keep putting money into your car. I cannot believe how much money I put into my car in the last six months. Surrendering, of course, but it's definitely been a con for me. Of course, I'm grateful to have a car. Living here is a practice of gratitude, is a practice of recognizing what's good, what you have, seeing the beauty around you and not letting the challenges get to you. It's, it's a mirror for life. If you want to choose to come here, work on generating strength, work on generating gratitude, work on generating abundance, <laughs> and work on building community when you come. Again, if you want some support, I'm here, I'm available. The link is down below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you very soon in the next video.